Hello and welcome to This Day Devo, Pastor Guy here. As we've been working through the New Testament, we find ourselves today in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19, and this is entitled Saul's Conversion. This is what we've been kind of quietly anticipating as Paul becomes a Christian and Paul becomes a central figure in the early church and in the rest of the book of Acts. Have you ever met anybody whose reputation precedes them? I mean, a simple example would be, say, uh, you have a boss that has been moved to your territory, and now you're going to have to start working for this boss, and you've heard through the grapevine of your company that they're a very hard person to work for, and so you're a little uncertain about how this is going to go because their reputation precedes them, so you're a little, like, not ready to give them a chance because you know too much about their reputation. Well, Saul had a reputation that was well-deserved, a reputation that was well-earned. He was persecuting Christians. He was getting permission from the government to persecute Christians, a letter that he could take to Damascus so that he can bring back every Christian that he found in chains. That was his mission, to get Christians in chains, to snuff out the way, to say the end to Christianity. But there is power in testimony. There is power in the presence of God. And God had a plan. So God shows up on the road to Damascus in a miraculous way and a bright light that blinds Paul, knocks him to the ground, and he hears the voice of Jesus. Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? The men with him can hear it, but they don't see it. They're not sure what's going on. He gets up, he walks, they help him blindly walk to Damascus. And for three days, he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink. God moves in the heart of a man named Ananias, whom he told Saul that he would send to him as a Christian. And Ananias is like, whoa, wait a second. I've heard about this guy. I've heard about his reputation. I've heard what he's been doing to Christians all over the region and in Jerusalem. And I I don't want to go there. And so then we get to hear what is God's plan for Saul he says, go. He says, Ananias, no, I'm not, this isn't up for debate. This isn't a question. I'm calling you. I've assigned you to this. Go, because Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles, to the kings, and to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. He's my instrument. He's the plan. He is the one who was passionately against me, who is now going to be passionately for me. The pendulum of hate, of extreme hate, has swung all the way to the side of extreme love. Love for Christ and love for the lost. And so Ananias goes, he prays for him, lays his hands on him, scales fall from his eyes, and he's immediately baptized. He regains his strength and he spends time right there for a few more days with Damascus' believers. The one who had came to get them is now worshiping and praying among them. This is the power of God. This is the power of Jesus showing up in the story. So friends, this is the story. This is one of the stories in scripture that we can point to and say, there is nobody in your life, in our age, in our generation, in our world, that can be so atheistic, so agnostic, so hateful towards Christians, so lost in sin, so lost in other religions, so much ap- so apathetic towards it all, so hateful and sinful that they cannot turn to Christ. There is not a single person who is outside of the reach of the grace and the mercy and the kindness of our Lord Jesus. So we must believe for that. The most vilest of all sinners that you know, the person that you can think of right now in your life, you say, wow, amazing. I would roll over in my grave if that person came to Christ. Yep, they are within the reach of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what do we do? We believe that and we pray for them. We pray, pray, 
Pray passionately. Pray fervently. Pray specifically for the conversion of their souls because God can and he does answer prayer. So believe on him for that. Today I learned this about Jesus and on this day I will this. How do you answer that question today? Go forth and pray for the conversion of souls. Every See you later. Word sent down from heaven as the power of Christ. 